Okay, so let me start with an overview. Um, we are a privately held company based here in San Diego, about 65 employees. As I said, we are a, a leading cell therapy company, and I'm gonna hopefully convince you why we are leaders in this space. And we have been focused on developing a cure for type 1 diabetes. We actually have two products in development. Um, one is what we consider, they're both essentially embryonic stem cell derived islet replacement therapies. So we start with an embryonic stem cell, we go through a directed differentiation protocol up to a pancreatic progenitor, then we implant that subcutaneously uh, to essentially replace the beta cell loss and, and the loss of the islet function uh, that is characteristic of type 1 diabetes. We have two products that we're developing. Uh, the first generation product actually is called PEC Direct. It's expected to be first generation in the sense the first one out of the clinic. It is targeting type 1 diabetes patients that are at high risk for acute complications. The second generation product actually was the first one to go into the clinic, and I'll explain why that made sense. Uh, but it targets essentially all type 1 diabetic patients, uh, not just the high risk patient, patient population, as well as insulin utilizing type 2 diabetic patients. Um, we have a number of novel platform technologies that we build on. One, we have a embryonic stem cell line called Site49. So our therapies are allogeneic. They are uh, human cells, but they're not the patient cells. Um, so we have this, this banked embryonic stem cell line that has been tested, thoroughly vetted, uh, has been reviewed by the regulatory authorities, and it gives us an unlimited supply of manufacturing material for our products. We also have a platform of technology for directed differentiation of stem cells up to key target cells. Uh, this is not rocket science these days, except unless you have to do it reproducibly in a regulatory compliant and scalable fashion, and that's what we do at Viasite. And then we have uh, delivery technologies, and I'll talk more about those in a minute. Uh, we have a very strong intellectual property position uh, in the company. Uh, we have over 350 issued patents worldwide, about over 75 issued in the U.S., including composition of matter patents, and over 700 pending applications. The, we have had, we are venture capital finance, but we've had strong support from advocacy groups, uh, specifically JDRF and the California Institute of Regen Medicine. Those two groups together have committed over 70 million to these projects, so uh, we're very excited about that. And a very experienced executive and scientific team. So probably for this audience, we don't have to explain diabetes too much. Um, diabetes in general is a, a worldwide uh, major issue. By 2030, they expect about 600 million people to have diabetes. About 5% uh, of that are type 1 diabetics, where it's an autoimmune disease that leads to the, the loss of the beta cell function. Um, and we believe cell therapy can have a big impact on this delivering essentially what would be a functional cure. There's also a, a large population of type 1 diabetics that are at high risk for disease, and I'll talk more about those as we go through the presentation. There is a good proof of concept or proof of principle for uh, cell replacement therapy as a cure for type 1 diabetes, and that's with cadaver islets. Um, over, uh, now we're up to around uh, 1,500 patients have been treated where they take cadaver islets, they isolate the islet, or sorry, cadaver pancreases, isolate the islets from them, takes sometimes two to three pancreases to get enough islets, they infuse it in the liver portal vein, and it is very successful at curing the disease. The issue is, and this is I just realized the wrong deck, but okay. Um, the issue is that uh, while this gives a clinical proof of concept, there are very significant limitations. And the biggest one is just a limitation on the, the material. You just don't have the uh, donor pancreas and islets uh, sufficient quantities to treat all of the high-risk patients. Uh, it also requires immunosuppressive drugs, which is why it's limited to the high-risk group, and it has a very high cost. So the products we're developing uh, address these limitations in a couple ways. So PEC Direct uh, addresses the first two, the first limitations of supply and cost. So it gives an unlimited supply of cells, but it will require immune suppression, so it's targeted at the high-risk patient population. PEC and CAP 
is designed to address all of the issues with cadaver islets, giving you an unlimited supply of cells uh, uh, in a way and delivering it in a way that it's protected from the patient's immune system. So it opens it up to all patients with type 1 diabetes as well as patients with type 2. So this summarizes uh, a lot of work, uh, many years of work in many patents. But basically, we start with a, uh, an embryonic stem cell line that we isolated a number of years back called Site 49. We have this in master and working cell banks. We can take a vial of cells out of that working cell bank that has millions of cells in it, and in a matter of two weeks, scale that up to billions of cells. Um, we then go through a directed um, differentiation protocol going from that embryonic stem cell up to a pancreatic progenitor. And these pancreatic progenitor cells are a mixture of endocrine cells that are destined to go on to form the cells of an islet. That takes about 12 days and uh, represents, uh, you know, almost uh, 50 or more patents. Um, we then encapsulate these cells uh, in a device, and the differences between the two products are shown here. PEC Direct has a device that has essentially ports in it that allow direct vascularization of those cells. So it's a very robust engraftment. It's very similar to what's seen with islets or with cadaver islets, um, and it's then implanted under the skin. It will require chronic immune suppression, and we're just getting ready to put this into clinic with an IND filing by the end of this year and clinical initiation early next year. PEC and CAP is really the, the hit it over the fence product. This is where we encapsulate it in a device that protects the cells from the patient's immune system, and therefore we could use it without the need for immunosuppression. And this opens it up to all of the patients that uh, could potentially benefit from a, a cell therapy. This one is in the clinic. We've had it in the clinic now for almost two years, um, and we have been making great progress towards making that an effective product. In both cases, when we, the way we use these is we, once we have made these cells in the manufacturing suite, they are loaded into the device, and then they are implanted into the patient in a simple outpatient procedure under the skin subcutaneously. We can put it in various different locations. We've been exploring which are the best from both a surgical and an efficacy point of view. Um, and then once they are implanted, they continue to mature, to proliferate, and differentiate to become essentially islets under the skin producing um, insulin, glucagon, somatostatin, uh, essentially indistinguishable from a, uh, a native islet. Um, we have extensively evaluated this in uh, non-clinical models, um, and we have shown that whether it's PEC and CAP or PEC Direct, they're both very effective in animal models. In fact, when we treat animals, for instance, in the mouse model, where the normal blood glucose level is at about 160 milligrams per deciliter, human normal is about 70 to 100 milligrams per deciliter. When we implant these cells in the mouse, we humanize that mouse for the life of the mouse. Uh, so they will now regulate to that human blood, set, blood glucose set point uh, for as long as we leave the cells in. If we pull the cells out, they'll go right back up to their normal set point. So it's very effective. Uh, it also will correct experimentally induced diabetes in these animals. So our strategy going into this was to start with PEC and CAP um, as, a as the uh, product that went into the clinic first. Um, it is a, this is again an allogeneic product. It's a human cell in a human. But when we do this in animals, it's a xeno product because it's now in a different species. So when we do animal studies, uh, we have to use knockout animals to do it. So the animals tell us a lot about the diabetes production, the ability of cells to differentiate, but they tell us almost nothing about how to engraft this into a human and get it to effectively engraft in. So we needed to get to the patients to understand what we were seeing in the animals, which models were going to be most relevant, and what procedures we needed to develop to get this engraftment. So we moved this one into the clinic, and we've been working on improving that engraftment ever since. 
Uh, at the same time, we were developing PEC Direct, um, and we were waiting to see what would happen with PEC and CAP. Once we had data from that, we moved forward aggressively with PEC Direct and are now moving it into the clinic. And it really builds on the knowledge that we've gained from the clinical evaluation of PEC and CAP, and it represents a much lower technical risk. So this is just a quick update on the PEC and CAP trial. Um, it's been safe and well tolerated to date. Um, no AEs related to the, the cell product itself. Um, the Encaptor drug delivery device is working as it was designed to, to do. It is protecting the cells from both allogeneic and autoimmune rejection. We don't even see any sensitization, so the device is, is definitely protecting against the adaptive immune system. And we have seen potential for long-term cell survival. This shows uh, some devices that were pulled out of patients and then uh, histology done, and you can see uh, whether this is a 12-week sentinel, we put these sentinels in, or whether it's one of our dose ranging units, we can see good cell survival out of 12 weeks. You can even see um, structure, islet-like structures forming within the device. However, I can tell you this is right now the exception, not the rule, okay? So we, need, we know we can do it, but we are continuing to develop the, the t surgical techniques, the uh, adjunct techniques needed to make this a reproducible and consistent finding. So that work is going on with PEC and CAP. In the meantime, it has showed us what, why PEC Direct is uh, the low-hanging fruit. Um, what is really limiting the engraftment with PEC and CAP is not surprising. It's a foreign body response to the device. We knew that going in that we'd see that. We just didn't know how aggressive it would be until we got to patients. And so we know when you get good vascularization of the cells, they survive, as I showed you on the previous slide. With PEC Direct, we completely avoid that foreign body response. In fact, we still get a foreign body response. We still see a, a fibrotic capsule formed around the device. But because of the direct vascularization, it doesn't matter. That's shown in the bottom picture there. Those yellow arrows all point to foreign body giant cells coating the device both inside and out. But we see a very robust engraftment of our cells um, because of this direct vascularization. We can still remove the cells. We've shown that we can remove 99.9% .9 of the cells. This is with the luciferase assay where we put them in and take them back out and we know the sensitivity of this. So we know we can remove essentially all the cells, um, at least 99.9%. So that's a big advantage, and there's a number of other advantages. Um, it's a relatively low technical execution risk, as we've already discussed. Uh, better dosing capacity, because we're not dependent on diffusion as we are with PEC and CAP. Uh, we still have the ability to terminate the treatment if we need to uh, by removal of the cells, which is a big regulatory uh, plus. And we expect accelerated and cost-effective development program. We will apply for orphan drug designation as well as breakthrough therapy designation when we have some data in hand on this next year. Um, and the, in addition, it's targeting this very high risk very, with a very high unmet medical need patient population. That represents about 125,000 patients in the U.S. So it also is a very significant commercial opportunity. Uh, manufacturing requirements are reduced given the, the targeted patients, and it's an excellent product for a, an emerging company. Where we are, we had a successful IND, pre-IND meeting with the agency, agreed on the preclinical studies. We're right now completing up the first stage of a, a GLP safety study that we'll use to file the IND uh, later this year. Um, and then uh, complete that with a nine-month cohort next year uh, after the studies start. Um, we are planning to file that IND as well as a application in Canada. Strategically, our plan is to aggressively pursue PEC Direct as a first generation product targeting these high risk patients for all the reasons I just said, but also to continue in parallel optimizing the second generation product, the PEC and CAP, uh, working with both now a validated preclinical model as well as clinical development to move that forward for patients. Uh, for all patients. As I said, we have a comprehensive patent portfolio. Earlier this year, we did a, a, a transaction with Janssen where we 
uh, acquired uh, Janssen Beta Logics, which was the other company out there or other group out there that was working in this field. So with this all combined, this shows the issued U.S. patents we have. The underlying ones are composition of matter patents. The green are the patents that came from beta logics going all the way from embryonic stem cell all the way up to uh, beta cell, stage seven cells. So that's it, uh, out of time, but this gives you a summary. I think we are really excited as to where we are with both of these products. We think uh, Peck Direct is gonna be an exciting first product to the market, followed thereafter by Peck and Cap. Uh, and uh, we're continuing to build on the technology expertise and, and advancement that we have. Thank you.